my computer everything works but I don't know how many of you will have a problem with that. So, Asher, you may share work or not yet? I think so. It will take forever to open. Is it just that? Perfect. I so. I was like, when I heard that, I was like, Okay, so let's just start. Uh, let's start, and we are going to work in these two. Uh, like uh, these diagrams maybe summarize all the class. So we're going to talk about all these coded vesicles. And I, I, I gave you some videos of things that they were very simple that uh, I will not cover in class, but because uh, maybe you have seen it before, but in case that you haven't taken it, you haven't studied, they're there. Here you can see also a lysosome. And the lysosome, if you see it here, they have a lot of things inside. We are not going to focus anymore in the membrane. I generally focus on the membrane in the first classes. Now we're going to see, uh, talk about all the enzymes that are inside and also all the proteins that, that are necessary for the lysosome to work. Okay, so, so let's start. Uh, so you already know all this information about Pinocytosis, uh, phagocytosis, receptor mediated endocytosis, and the caviole that we cover in the lipid graph. Those are examples of uh, endocytosis. Yeah. So we're going to start the class talking about endocytosis. Yeah. Uh, and I'm going to later move into coded vesicles. And there are three types of coded vesicles that, if you need to remember, Few things in the class is that there are three types of uh, coded vesicles. So the first one, platrin. Second one, cop cop one or cop two. This cop means from coded protein. Yeah, so coded protein one, coded protein two, and in the same way that in few weeks we all have winter jackets when we are outside. 
these uh, vesicles will have coatings of proteins, and those I, I told you I have been talking about membranes in the, in the in the past. Now we're going to talk about the proteins, and we're going to see to some degree, not in a lot of detail, all the proteins that are needed there. So, for example, the docking mechanism, similar to a ship, a boat, you will see a lot of proteins involved in that. Uh, and the third one will be the caviol. That the caviol is the one that we talk uh, before with the lipid draft. So endocytosis, different type of endocytosis. Then we will move to coated vesicles. That uh, and then we will talk about lysosomes, and we will talk about hetero, uh, autophagy, and autophagy. Okay. So these two type of autophagy. So in the first section of the class, I will finish the section of endocytosis and I will finish. You know, I cannot believe how bad is the resolution of sorry. And I tried to play with the zoom, but if you uh, I can tell you and if you want to download this uh, uh, power, uh, the presentation and watch it there, it's OK. Uh, so. We have two. Uh, type of, oh, we have three types of secretory pathways. One, the first one that if you read there is called the, the constitutive uh, secretory pathway. Doesn't require, does have, it doesn't have regulation. Second one that I will talk is the, uh, the regulatory, uh, the regulated secretory pathway. In this case, if you see, you need a signal to release the this, uh, the vesicles and the third one will be again the lysosomes how the lysosomes sometimes uh, break everything digest it but they need to exhaust it, uh, do it exocytosis okay so three main pathways that they will be there and we are going to talk about these cytogen grounds that are very important for uh, if you want to study problems for Diabetes. This is related to how we uh, are able to uh, uh, when there's sugar, they secrete all the insulin from there. And we will also talk about this this KDL that are retrieval tracks that they can break this. And uh, there will be a question about that. Okay, so here they are. This this slide looks better. Uh, here I, I summarize the entire thing that we have been talking for several classes. Here is the endomembrane system. And now uh, you have seen here again the cup one and cup two. If you see they are in one side in blue and the other one's in red. Why? Because they are vesicles. And now we're focusing what is the difference? Because they have different proteins in the membrane. And here Remember that I told you how they are able to go to different places because they have tags less blood that we talked about before. They have retrieval tags like here. Yeah, they have different proteins. And today we will talk about this example of secretory granules. So some of the proteins will go to the lysosomes. Some of them will go to the mitochondria, but some of them, they are going to be secreted. So. If before class you were like, oh, I want, I need some sugar. So you have some sugar, so they, you need to release insulin and they need to be secreted. Yeah. So not all the proteins are going to go for the organs of the cell. Some of them are going to be secreted and they go through exocytosis. And we're going to talk about that. So remember, retrieval tracks here that we talked last time. You have the lysosome and the endosomes that we will talk, that we talked last time. Again, if you see yellow things there, it's because they have proteins that are coding those uh, vesicles that are very important and we will cover. So remember, cup, uh, cup one, cup two, flattering, those are very important. And, oh, sorry. And uh, I, we have been talking about endocytosis and exocytosis. In, uh, in, uh, at home, you watch many videos of exocytosis and endocytosis, and you know that they are responsible for delivering, for example, drugs. All of us 
we uh, possibly got vaccinated. Um, the study of vesicles, it was very important to be able to deliver RNA inside of the cell. We also know that they are very important for rec uh, recycling. So I, I have been talking about the lysosome in terms of, like compared like the stomach, you know, because they are digesting uh, uh, some of the material, but they are not only doing that, they are actually recycling a lot of the materials. And those vesicles are very important to do that. So if you have a lot of, uh, if you have an entire organelle, the cell is not going to, if it's going to destroy a mitochondria, it's not going to, uh, it's going to break it into small pieces and use each one of the components, each one of the phosphates of the proteins of the amino acids to do something else. And these vesicles are important to do that. And finally, the membrane protein turnover. So for example, the insulin and all the different proteins, they need to be, uh, the endocytosis and exocytosis is very important for that. And there should be a balance between these two. As we talked last time, if, if there's too much ex uh, exocytosis or too much endocytosis, the membrane or get too big or get too small. So that is a key thing. So, and we many times have said that exit come from, a, uh, in, if you need to remember, exocytosis and enter for endocytosis. Uh, so, in the beginning of the class, we will talk about this, this pathway, the secretory pathways. Later, we will go to the one below. That is the one of the lysosomes. So one is of the exocytosis, the other one is the endocytosis. Okay. So in your textbook, if you read it, they will talk a lot about techniques, yeah? And there is so much information about how they found those things. So uh, all these vesicles. And here we have a diagram that is very easy. You have cargo inside, yeah? You have a secretary vesicle, and then the product goes outside. Yeah, in the class, we are not going to focus now in the diagram. I'm going to show you what is happening actually in the membrane that allow it to secrete that or, the, or that allow it to attach to other to other organelles. And so in the beginning, when we use uh, electron microscopy, you, the thing that you used to see in these vesicles is that they were electrodes. Now, if you see, these are three examples. We are using a lot of uh, live imaging or antibody staining. So in the same way that you, some of you tried to do the dissections and and, and uh, um, we have different PhD indicators to see the intestine of the flies. Here they're using other stainings. These stainings uh, allow, for example, to see these pro uh, the vesicles, to see how they go to the ER, to the Golgi, to see uh, how uh, the different type of behavior. So you can do it live imaging with GFP tags, or you can just do it with a uh, uh, fluorescent with antibody stains. And this is, is, is giving a lot of information about that. Okay, three methods. Oh, this slide looks much better. So again, constitute secretory pathway, the regulated secretory pathway, and the lysosomal secretory pathway. Okay, so in your textbook, you can also read about this polarized secretion. So here, the key information here is that they, uh, in the constitute secretory pathway, the vesicles are just constantly leaving the ER and being secreted, yeah? They go to the surface and they locate there. Yeah, so there is no regulation. Yeah, there is unregulated the, the, this process. And here again, our friends, remember COP1, and COP2. So here you have the endoplasmic reticulum. Here you have an example of a protein that by mistake it went into the Golgi apparatus. So what happened? In the Golgi apparatus, you have this KDL uh, receptor that is going to attach it and it's going to retrieve it and it's going to bring it back. Yeah. So this is an example of a retrieval track. And in this case, this, uh, this, uh, protein is not able to leave, it's going to be 
it's, it's going to come back to the ER that it is the place where it's needed, okay? So, uh, so the removal of, of this key DL, these retrieval tags, uh, yeah, can allow that, for example, this protein, instead of stopping here, it will be secreted, yeah? That it will be a problem. This is why this is so important to have these uh, receptors. And there is the first question. Uh, uh, Rico, could you read it for us? Using genetic engineering techniques, which of the following genes due to a protein that is normally that it normally is constitutively secreted to make it accumulate in the ER? Okay, so it looks too complicated, but it's not. Here you need to remember they are using genetics, so they are cutting or pasting something, yeah, that into a protein. Uh, that is normally constantly, <laughs> constitutively secreted. What is, sorry, Duncan, what is this weird word that I cannot pronounce, at, although I just explained to you. What is this constitutively secreted that is not regulated? Yeah, that is constantly just leaving the, sorry? The constantly being secreted? Yes, yeah, that is, uh, that is constantly being secreted without being regulated. You need a signal. Uh, and what do you do to that protein that is constantly secreted to not that, do that anymore, yeah? To stay in the ER. So I know that you already have seen the presentation, but in case that disappear in the exam, uh, fusing to GFP, what is going to do if you put a GFP in, in that protein? If you put something in that protein, it's going to now, when you go to the microscope, the protein is going to be fluorescent, but it's not going to do anything else. What happens if you add a key DL sequence near to the C terminus? So act as like, oh, like a message to stop. Retrieval tag. Okay. Exactly. So it's going to go back and it's going to accumulate in the year. Okay. So the picture that I just show you, this is this is, I think this is one of the the questions when I was reading. I'm like, no, what is this? It's very easy, and I send it. I show it to you now, so in the test it will be easier. Uh, Angus, yes. What happened if I use this uh, add to this protein? I add an amino acid that will get amino cis phosphate group added to the carbohydrate. What is this amino cis phosphate? Go and check your notes. I know I, every year I have to remember. Somebody remember what is that? Okay, but it's there and you know that we study it. I'm happy with that. With the in the exam, you will remember that this is a tag that it send the enzymes to the lysosome. So if you put that into a, into a, into a protein, what it's going to do is that the protein goes to the, to the lysosome. So this is not what we are looking for. It's not going to get stuck in the ear. Eh, okay. Uh, Asher, what do you think that happened here with D? If you mutate, one of the aspergin that is normally glycosylated to an alanine, which is not glycosylated. Will it just change some of the functions? Mm -hmm. And is, we don't know exactly what is going to happen, but we don't know if the ER. Yeah, yeah. So this is not the correct answer. Uh, and this one will be none of this cause the protein to accumulate to the ER. So I know that I gave you already the answer, so you know this is incorrect. All of them will be correct. The only one was this. I know that this will take a little bit of time. When you study, you have the answer. I think this is one of the most difficult ones. If you add a, a protein GFP, it will make a fluorescent. If you add this manose 6-phosphate, this is the tag that allowed to go to the enzymes uh, to the lysosomes. Yeah, it's a tag. It's the one that we described. This one, glycosylation is very important, but this doesn't mean that we don't know what is going to happen there. 
And, and this is wrong because I just told you this is a retrieval tag. So if you have that retrieval tag, it's going to accumulate. OK, I leave the slides in case that you want to study. OK, now second type of secretion that is the, the opposite, the one that is regulated. So if you see here, there is a, there is a signal. There is a receptor and there is a ligand. Yeah, if you see it here in green over there, there is a receptor and there is a lichen. And uh, there, sorry, do you see what happened here? What is happening here? In this, what do you think that they are showing us within this diagram here? Yeah, they are stuck there until the signal is ready. So what you're going to find here uh, in these uh, cells in the pancreas is that you are not sending insulin all the time. People, I don't know if one of you have hyperglycemia. I used to have that. And so I was always low in sugar. So my pancreas was all the time hyperactive. Yeah. Uh, and, and we need to have a well-regulated uh, levels of, of, of sugar in our body. Yeah, so in my case, I need to. I used to need to eat every two hours. If not, I was feeling like uh, a little bit uh, weak, and, and and try to eat something that it was not sh too sugary. Uh, but it was when I was a teenager. So this is so. In these ones, they are not going to continue. They are not constantly be going secreting. They are going to accumulate here. These are accumulated, and when the signal is ready, they are going to leave. Okay. And here you can see the pancreas and for the one that are taking anatomy and physiology here you or that already took it just know that this is a gland so here all these uh, um, these granules are being released to this duct this ductal cell and here you have direct you don't remember but when you were sitting one day with Rick and where Rico was here you can see this is cymogen granule here, this is one, I think two classes ago, I asked you about this. This is the cymogen granule that is related to the insulin. This is where you secrete it. Okay, so signaling, this is regulated, and for that reason, they accumulate and they accumulate here. So again, they need to have a extracellular signal. We will talk about extracellular signals in a few weeks. And the vesicles, instead of being released, they are accumulating. And this is very important for the regulation of the insulin in the pancreas. Here, if you want to go crazy, I'm not going to ask you this, but here you can see in much more detail what is happening. Here you see the granules, how they accumulate, and they are regulated by pH. They can be regulated by amino acid sequence, they can be reg uh, regulated by high concentrations. All those things are regulating this, uh, this secretion, okay? Okay, uh, Noella, could you, did I pronounce? Yes, I said, right. Could you read this one for us? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have these pancreatic cells and they produce and store these hydrolyt hydrolytic enzymes. Yeah. Uh, and something happened. Yeah, there is a signal that allowed them to release. Yeah. So super easy. So this question looked like super complicated, but it's just what, what we just said. Okay, computer, help me. Uh, Julia, what is transport secretion? Exactly, we don't know. This is a word that the book made up. What is regulated secretion? Signal. Yeah, what is this? Constitutive uh, secretion is the one that is not regulated, that is happening constantly. 
Okay, and the intracellular secretion, we haven't, these are terms that they are not related to what we're talking. Okay, so if they appear in the test, uh, the, your textbook, I am taking this, so I'm trying to mix up some of the questions from the textbook and some of them from the quizzes. This seems to be difficult because they have terms that are very weird, but if you see, it's pretty easy. Is these two things that you have seen multiple times in the schematic. And they will made up words like this transport secretion and intracellular secretion. They they don't they are not in the textbook. And consistent secretion actually don't like they are not there. Okay, so you find it there. So I just told you about the, the endocytosis and exocytosis. They need to have a balance. And I told you that there are different. Pro, uh, secretory pathways and the key is that one of them are regulated and other ones are not regulated. Okay, and I show you something that you can check at home that retrieval tax and these cymogen granules that you can remember. I know that at this point is too much information, but for the test, give it a look. And if the KDL is put it in the, in the tag, this is going to disappear because it's going to accumulate there. Yeah. Okay. So I'm not going to talk about pinocytosis. You already know about that. I'm not going to talk about phagocytosis. There is a video about that. Uh, and I'm going to go directly into the coded vesicles. And um, um, what is a coded vesicle? So here, a coded vesicle is vesicles that are formed uh, by self assembly. So you watch all the video of the triskeleton that it forms in a very pretty way. And here I put in yellow the coded proteins, and in uh, in blue the the membrane. Why? To remind you that there will be a lot of proteins uh, involved in the function, so they can decide what is the destiny. Again, I'm going to talk about three type of coded proteins: clatrin, COB1, and COB2. Remember, COB1 means coded protein one. COP2 mean coded protein 2. And you already know about this. You, well, there was a video. I was going to go crazy and send you uh, explain that, but I there I put two presentations, one that is small and the other one that is long. In the video, they summarize the information and you can read it more in your textbook. Uh, and the, I also added two videos about this vesicle formation. Yeah, and the LDL regulation. OK, so I'm going to focus on these two to not make the class uh, too confusing because there will be too many terms. OK. Uh, uh, Felicia, could you read this question? That is very easy. So what do you think that is the answer? Sorry. Okay. Somebody say A with her. Yeah, everybody say wonderful. So the answer is A. You're right. And if you see the other ones, don't make any sense. Structure composed of DNA and RNA. No. Membrane bond organelles found in plants. No. Large backfill filled with enzymes. No. So perfect is A. And what is a coded vesicle? So I already told you that these vesicles that have a code of proteins and membranes, and you can see them here. This is how I told you that they were studying in the past, that they were sent, uh, they were an electron microscope, and you just see, if you see on the top of your screens, in the, uh, you see the electron microscopy pictures. Now we can use fluorescent microscopy and tag the proteins that are there and see in fluorescent, so it's much easier. And this vesicle trafficking remind me a lot of the CD. Uh, and in this case, these uh, coded vesicles, they will be like the Amazon, the FedEx, all these things that are the Uber that are moving a lot of products. And the function is uh, so is transport proteins and lipids and uh, leading to a collection of vesicle cargo and membrane bending that form a bag. Okay, so 
we will show you how this happened. Yeah, how this uh, this process happened in the following slides. And remember, we need to remember these three type of molecules. So, Felicia, excellent job, pretty easy. Uh, Adriana, por favor, help me here. Mm -hmm. So try to reach. Doesn't have to be perfect, but if this question appears in the test, you already know the answer. So what do you think? Definitely a storage of genetic material is wrong, yeah? Which one do you think that is correct? Of a vesicle. Do you think that they are producing energy through photosynthesis? That would be the chloroplast. The regulation of cell shape and structure, who is doing that? The cytoskeleton. So the only option would be B, okay? I hope to be right. Yes. So um, I already told you, so I'm going to talk about the type of coded vesicles. I already told you there are three types. I talked about this for one long time ago when we talk about the lipid graph. This is the most recently found. Most recently is like 20 years. The other one were found in the in the in the 70s. And um, I will show you some videos about that. But so here you can see a, a picture of a, a, a diagram of the clattering. Here you have a protein called dynamin, that is the one that uh, cut the vesicle. And here you have the clear uh, protein code that it will lead, it will help uh, the, this vesicle to go to a specific locations in the cell. Uh, okay, um, Maddie, cup one and cup two. How many, what are all these things that are here? with different colors that you see there. What do you think that are all those things? There are a lot of proteins. All those proteins will change between different uh, between different uh, vesicles. And I will, you don't have to memorize all of them, but they might be a question that asks you, sec one is in which one? Se uh, which one is in the clatching one? Yeah, what is a triskeleton? Triskeleton, yeah. And, all of this, remember I told you that I was not going to talk about the membrane in, in terms of vesicle, but I was going to show you that actually even the small vesicle has a lot of proteins that allow the cell, uh, the vesicle to, to properly anchor into the, uh, the organelle. Okay, so later we will make sense to all these names. Uh, so I just told you what are coded vesicles and they are very important in the vesicular traffic in the endocytosis and exocytosis, and I already told you multiple times that there are different types. In this case, I talk about this one. Uh, Eric, I want that you help me. You can look in your, over there, uh, here, I want that you see this diagram. That are here, the vesicles, clattering, cup one, cup two, and cabulin. What is the origin? and the destination of the clatterings. Origin, cell membrane, destination, Golgi. Uh-huh, yeah. And this one, in this one is, you did perfect. So one can go to the endosome, and uh, membrane to the endosome, and endosome to the, to the Golgi. Which part of the Golgi? Trans. Very good, yeah. So here, good. So, perfect. Hey, Rico. This red one, yeah, that is called COP1. What is the origin and the destination? The red one. Oh, sorry. Oh, oh, oh. You point oh. Out no, but... I, I think I color coded. Yeah. I had a doubt. Yes, I color coded in the opposite way. So COP1 will be the blue one, sorry. Uh, the blue one, where it goes, the blue one. The origin and the destination of the blue one. It stirs the goji, that goes to the cytoplasm, is that right? 
uh, K, it goes to the Golgi and goes to the ER. Okay, here is the, the sorry, here is the cytoplasm, everything, but here it will be the ER. So it always go here. Good. Sorry, you know, I try to color code everything and then I realize that I have to change. Hopefully in two years when I teach it again, I remember uh, before to change the colors. Okay, uh, Duncan, super easy. Uh, the COP2, where it originate and where it, uh, what is the destination? It's just the other way around. So yeah, good. Oops, I already gave the other answer. So Angus, happy birthday. Here is the difficult question. That we don't know as this one is the one that that it was more recently found. We know that they go from the plasma membrane because it's a little bit rough, and we think that it goes to the ER. Okay, it's not in this in this diagram. And here are the coded proteins. So here you see clatrin, yeah, clatrin, COP1, COP2, and cavilin. And these ones, you need to remember it. Maybe uh, some of you have seen it in your articles. So this ARF, this SEC13, all these ones, SAR1, all of those ones would be in the test, and I will describe them. Uh, okay. Okay, so I have told you that there are different vesicles, COP1, COP2, clatrin, and cavilin, and I told you that they have different locations. Some of them will be located here. Some of them will go into uh, anterograde, other ones will go into retrograde, and other ones will be between the membrane and the ER. Uh, they have different components, so you watch a video about these things. Yeah, about the triskeleton, uh, triskelia, and that I'm not going to go in detail about the different components, but if you see the cages that they have different components, they will have different cages. And I show you in the beginning the video of how pretty they sell a sample. Okay, okay. Uh, pretty easy question, uh, hopefully. Uh, could you read it? What is the primary function of COP1? Facilitate the transport of proteins from the Golgi apparatus to the endocyte. I think you're right. Maybe in the oh, this is this is the one that you said. No, I. I yeah. Did I have a mistake? No, no, yeah, you're good. You know, at this hour is when my brain is start going down. So, median in the retrograde transport, so it goes backwards. Uh, they go from the Golgi to the endoplasmic reticulum. I know this is, uh, it would make more sense that the COP1 will go from the ER to the Golgi, uh, but it's actually the COP2, the, COP the one that go from the, the ER to the Golgi, and the COP1 is the one that come back, and this is why it is a, a retrograde. Uh, I don't know if you remember, if you studied with John or with me, the photosystems, that one, that the first photosystem in photosynthesis is the photosystem two, and the other one is the photosynthesis. You go the photo, the, from the photosystem two to the photosystem one. That Why? Because they found one first and they put a photosystem one, and then they found the other one, so they switched the name. So possibly they did something like that. Okay, so remember that for the test, so don't get confused. Uh, uh, please, Asher, let's see. Let's see. So this is COP2. This one will be B. Let's see. Yes, good. So, uh, so in this case, you just have for the test, you just have to sit and think a little bit. Even I, when I go, I'm like, give me a second. What is cup one and what is cup two? But yeah. Okay. So here, this is one of the main researchers involved in this field. He was the one who found a lot of these things. The one that found the uh, all these vesicles, he got a Nobel Prize and he was using yeast. Uh, and uh, this is like the, the person that followed him. If you are interested in not, you know, not only knowing this 
in terms of theory, but in terms of practice. Uh, John Brubaker teach a course uh, using this type of techniques, and and he he work on this kind of things. Okay, so let let's see the video. Let's see if I think. Oh, so Maddie, all the proteins that you saw that they yeah are one GTP is located there. You see how they go from G. GTP to GDP, there is something called a, a small GTPases. So what is a small GTPases is, is this. Is, you see that I can turn on and off this? All the small GTPases that you will hear everywhere, they are molecular switches. Yeah, so ATP and GTP are very good for energy, but they are also good for turning on and off process. So. From now on, in this class, you will hear about all our GTP aces. And in signaling, there will be a lot of GTP aces from now on, okay? And what they are, one of the functions is turning on and off. You will hear about this sec, a lot of this sec here. There are different, uh, there are different one of those. Um, and I'm going to let this guy talk. Okay, so so here 
to do that, a, a, a diagram to summarize everything that is happening there. So you remember that I told you that there were different vesicles. So each one of them have their own proteins. Each one of them will have their own GTPases. Yeah, but it, it, the idea of creating this bubble, you know, that is going to uh, imaginate all this is very similar. Ah, uh, here you have GTPases. Yeah, the small GTPase that is the molecular switch, and you have the different sac proteins. I'm not going to ask you to describe in all of them, but I am going to give you a summary uh, of that in the following that that might be in the test, just that you know the generalities. OK, so remember that we talk about this uh, SAR. There is another one that is very similar, another small GTPase that is the R. Again, a molecular switch. We will be now from now on saying what is happening here. Everything is start because there is a molecular switch that is start all this process. And question for the next in the following classes, why we is we use as a molecular switch something like ATP and GTP. Why we use that, you know? You know, why nature decide to use that for energy and also as a molecular switch? That is a question that we will answer in the following slides. So, and you can think about it uh, because there is just pure biochemistry and physics. What they 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 pick that nature pick that. So summary: these proteins are here. I took this from this guy that I found that this was very much easier. I show you the entire video to show you how it works. I'm not going to repeat for every single molecule because it's the same thing. Just a lot of proteins that they do the. It's something analogous, but look for COP2, this is what we watch, and look all the SEC. This will be the coded proteins. The associated uh, GTPase is this SAR1. And the step mediated that you already did is located here. Here, the COP1, here you have the coded proteins, and here, look, the other ones will be, all of them will be R. Yeah, that will be the GTPase, okay? So hopefully I'm not going to tell you an open question, repeat all the things that the guy said, no, but I might, they might ask you one of these things, okay? Uh, okay. And again, this was is the only, the last one that it was recently discovered. And it's located in lipid graph, and we already talked about that before. Okay. Uh, so when I was watching this, and sometimes when I uh, study cell biology and they describe every single protein that I, of every single thing, I get extremely bored. But uh, I, I think this guy sold very well, sold me the idea of why this is important. So all these crazy ARF and all these proteins and vesicles, without this understanding, we would not have the that vaccine, yeah, that it was using vesicles also to bring RNA. So again, something that it looked like have no sense who will think that studying yeast was going to save human life. But but in the long term, the, these kind of things happen when we invest in science. So good. So now I, I'm sure that you know. This, what is a coded protein, and you know why I put it in yellow and in blue. I repeat that there are, we're only going to talk about these three types. And if you watch the video, you know that the framework works like this. Yeah, and that is uh, one that is very famous. And you know about, uh, about this process that you can uh, go and see it again and, and read it in, in more detail in the textbook. Okay, so now I'm going to talk very fast, 
mm, very quickly about the lysosome, the functions. I'm going to talk about the docking mechanism. And uh, I'm going to, so here the docking in the same way that a boat is going to attach to the land. Here you have proteins that work like ropes that allow the attachment to be done. And at the end, uh, if we have time, I will talk about heterophagy and autophagy. Uh, okay, I'm not going to ask you this question because it's too easy. Uh, and I'm just going to tell you that, oh, sorry, that inside of, if you remember the video, inside of, of the lysosome, there is a lot of enzymes. Uh, so if you need to destroy a bacteria, how you using enzymes, how would you destroy it, Eric? If you need to, there is a bacteria, how do you, and you need enzymes to destroy it, how do you destroy it? Yeah, but, the yeah, and in the lysosome, you will have, the bacteria will have a membrane, so you need something that bring the lipids, so they will have lipidases. They have proteins, they have proteases. They need to destroy the DNA, they will have DNases. They will have nucleases. They will have everything there. So one thing that the lysosome does is doing this kind of things. It was discovered in 1950, and it's involving the degradation of molecules. Here is the diagram that is very pretty, the animation, but uh, in the, the electron microscopy picture will look like this. Um, they vary in size, but they are about five micrometers. Okay, so we will focus. There is here, you can see when you study for the test, there are all these functions that go from the, they can control tumor invasion and metastasis. How? Because they can destroy a receptor that is creating a lot of proliferation, but we're going to focus on the degradation. Uh, if you study anatomy and physiology, you direct, you are studying anatomy and physiology. So the remodeling of the, of the bones, yeah, it's very easy to grow the, the bones in length. So you have proliferation here and proliferation here or proliferation here and here, but they also need to increase in diameter. So they have like rings, so they need to be remodeled and the lysosome have this acid phosphatase that is very important. These luminal site have protein that protect the lysosome, similar to your stomach. The stomach is very acid. How the stomach don't destroy themselves because it has also a layer. Here you will have a specific protein that they will protect the lysosome so it doesn't de destroy itself. Uh, why we have amino acid transporters, nucleic acid transporters, sugar transporters, cholesterol transporters, ion channel transporter, Duncan. As there are lots of different kinds of molecules that need to be transported. So, so we are going to work to, with certain types. So we are going to degrade all those things so they have to go inside. And, and so we need to transport them, all of them. And because why this is a horrible question. What is that thing doing? The ATPase that, in, that you find in the mitochondria now that bring protons, why do you have it here? Did Nicholas made a mistake? Why we have it in a, in a lysosome? Um, is, it like, is it adding ITPase? Protons, of, yes, it's exactly. So you, if you remember Janice, when you were calibrating things with pH, yeah? Yeah, when you have a lot of uh, protons, you will have a more acidic pH. You need to have here an acidic pH, yeah, to destroy all these molecules. And these enzymes, they work in acidic environments. Uh, uh, this lamp are the protein, are, and, uh, are the protein that protect the lysosome for, for being destroyed. And here we are going to focus on the this one that are the snare ones. Uh, Derek, have you heard about these ones? The motility? No, they want here on the top. It will be organelle contact. Yes, you cannot read this. Can you read it there? The only for the tethering factors. So here, for the, for the one at the very top. The, the second one? Oh, it's okay. The small GTPases. 
that I have been talking the molecular switches. Sorry, I need to have. I hate the, the resolution of this. So do you remember that I told you about the molecular switches? This is going to allow this. The theorem, very important, the motor adapter, all of them will work together to produce the docking. So uh, the function of the snare proteins, I was very smart here and I gave you the answer that is B, that you can see there is facilitating the fusion between vesicles and here I have a small media. Okay, so you hear this word wrap. This is an R small GTPase. Okay, you have here about SAR1, ARF, all of them molecular switches. Okay, so you saw what is happening. We have these snare proteins that are the SNAP receptor that are a large family that allow the vesicles to dock, yeah, to properly attach to. Uh, an organelle or, for example, to the lysosomes, to the neurons. And so the snare proteins facilitate the fusion of vesicles with target membranes. Here, this is what is happening. Steps one, two, and three. This is a simplification of what happened. You have the vesicle here and the target uh, membrane. They will be, do you see, these tiny ropes. These will be the snare proteins. They intertwine. They create a hemifusion. This is a, instead of bouncing, as they have the, the snare proteins, they go through this uncomfortable stage that is thermodynamically difficult to go because the membranes are going to fuse, but they are able to stand because they have these snare proteins that are intertwined. And then they form a fusion pore, and then this is solved. Okay, so all the cargo is outside. So three simple uh, uh, steps, proteins that are involved, NSF, the snaps, the snares. Yeah, I put the names. I know that right now is like too much information. Now I'm going to show it how it's in your textbook. And in your textbook, they will talk about this. All these components, you have a donor membrane, here, look, RAV GTPAs, the molecular switch. Uh, uh, page snare. And why it has like a why this letter here? Because this is a vesicle. Yeah, vesicle. So this. Yeah, they will be a B snare. Here you have a snare that is start with a T because this is the target one. Okay. So they have two snares and they will have to fuse and are the one that intertwine. Yeah. Uh, the tethering complex that I think Derek last time when I was trying to point everywhere that I was enabled, these one are protein that act even before the snare. So this is what I show you in the uh, in the previous one and in the video one simplified in the textbook they they add extra steps. So before the snares that are the ropes like the ropes pro to, uh, that that uh, that intertwine, you have to have this uh, tethering uh, complex that allows the vesicle to stop, and then the rab GTPA that is located here. 
here, the rub is here, sorry, that it will be here. It will allow that these two fuse, and when they these two fuse, the snares are going to attach, and they are open this path. Okay, so here you see the opening of the fusion of the pore. Uh, this rough GTPA says again, small GTPA says it's rub one, rub seven, rub eleven. Hundreds of GPTP aces. Uh, and all this process facilitate the fusion of the membranes. Uh, here at the end, these SNAPs and NSF, all their proteins are going to allow that everything disassemble and they can be reused. Okay, so I want that you when you go home and before the test, you gave a look to these things. I know that there is a lot of information but I wanted that you understand the basics. The vesicles, they need to attach and they have proteins to do that. The same thing that happened with a boat that is going to the land, you need to have a rope, you need to have a post, so it, it stays properly attached. We have a, a proteins that are involved into that. And it, it is located, in, they are located in the lysosome, they are located in the neurons, they are located uh, in, in, in any vesicles. Okay, uh, not important. Um, this is the question that I ask to um, to Angus. These ATPAs that have protons, they are going to be the one that are changing the pH. So here you see the pH from a molecule, from a vesicle, it start reducing until it arrives to the lysosome. So it goes to seven to five. How is that? Because these protons arrive from there. Uh, and these are all the enzymes that I bother Eric asking. So look, acid hydrolases that have a low pH. They have nucleases, proteases, glycosides, all of these. They can bring, they can break an organelle, they can break a bacteria, they, and, and they allow the H pump is very important to, to have that so acidic. Uh, I'm going to take four more minutes to tell you about this graph and the wreck. What is the difference in the heterophagy and autophagy just from the roots? Um, Autophagy is probably like itself, uh -huh. and heterophagy would be like something else from probably other side. Perfect. So here, when you watch the videos of phagocytosis, a bacteria is coming and is going to destroy it. When the in case that you have to go, quizzes are already open. Okay, good, good. And here you have a just sometimes something that bacteria do or virus do is like. They can trick, they can mimetize and pretend to be a, 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 they have protein that are very similar to the one that are used using receptor endocytosis, uh, receptor mediated endocytosis in order where they have a protein that it will attach to a ligand. They copy the same thing. So the same mechanism that we use for the normal traffic, bacteria can do it. So they, you can bring all these materials inside of here in a, this multivascular body that has all these enzymes, and they are going to form this colon endolysosome that are going to destroy everything. So good, heterophagy, thing that come from outside. They can go from phagocytosis that you already watched the video, to, they can come from receptor mediated endocytosis. Autophagy, uh, this is remind me the movies of the 90s that the, every time they like, this uh, these, uh, facility will self-destroy in nine, eight. This is the same thing. So the, uh, the, this is what happened. You can destroy the first floor, the second floor, the entire the facility. So the uh, autophagy is destroying, create a double membrane to destroy something inside of the cell. The mitochondria to destroy uh, some part of the cell or to destroy the entire cell. See if you want to destroy it, destroy the entire cell, like this facility will destroy it completely, yeah, in two seconds. 
this will be the autolysis that the, the, the lysosome just break and all the enzymes going outside of the lysosome and destroy the entire cell. Here uh, is a small, it's just destroying a room. So you create this out of some, you have double membrane. Here you have one membrane, you have double membrane. Why? It's like when you use two zip bags. Yeah, so that you don't want to mix something. So two produce are more effective. And, um, and as a result, the lysosome fuse with the autophagosome and form the auto auto lysosome. Okay, so I very quickly told you that there are two types of uh, 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 functions of the lysosomes. One that is the heterophagy and the other one that is the autophagy. And uh, in the textbook and in this presentation, there will be more information in case that, that you want to know more about it. And you can finish the class taking the quiz if you haven't taken it. If not, if you already took the quiz, please make sure that you already download image A and tell me if it's working or not working for you.